So, hi and welcome back. This is voiced over because I was filming while my husband was sleeping right next to me. And didn't want to wake him up. So, back to my abused sketchbook and I sketched out a crane standing in water. I have some extra doodles there to give me an idea and I am going to find me a different type of transfer paper than I used for the other page because that was too much. This is a wax thing and not a... the other was uh, chalk. So I hope this wax uh, transfer paper will give me a more discreet line. Uh, I should have <laughs> transferred this to some transfer paper so I could get a better idea where I placed this on the paper. I'll get it centered fine, top bottom, kind of feel my way but I don't feel how I center it horizontally. So I decided to put it there and we'll just deal with the rest afterwards. So I got the tracing paper underneath and I'm just tracing with a common pencil to trace the, the drawing down. The, this drawing is going to be kind of the same type as the koi that I did on the page behind it. Uh, it's just going to be a fairly simple line work drawing. And I'm not going to make it any particular realistic, so to speak. I only just hint at the features that I need to have to make it a crane. Just checking, yes, there's something underneath there, and it's not too much, and we can go on. So, yeah, um, the tracing paper I'm using is actually not really meant for drawings. I picked it up in the sewing center. It's something you would normally use to trace patterns onto fabric with, but it works fine for this purpose as well. And um, you can get it in four different colors, red, blue, yellow and white. So you just pick whatever color is appropriate for whatever project you are going to to do. You have to pick both for the type of paper or background you're using but also for the colors you're going to draw or paint with afterwards. So yeah, I'm just drawing in the feathers of the wings here. All I've done for this sketch was look at different photos of cranes to get just a general idea about how they look. I haven't measured out the, autonom the, the autonomy of them. I don't know if... I think the body is a little too short and stuff, but that's not the point of this drawing. The point is just to make kind of a symbol of a crane. So um, that that will work better for line art than some high realistic drawing. So there's the legs and while I was drawing the legs in I was wondering if it would fit with the, the pen I was going to use or if all the if I done two small details on there. Yep. You can't see it. But uh, yeah. That's actually amazing. I never noticed that it wasn't uh, visible on on the camera really. You can just barely see the outline, but I had no problem seeing it. And I like this more discreet outline better than the high white I got with the koi. So white Posca pen. And here we go. And I'm just following my trace lines. At least for the start. And I was being a good girl and remembered to to do the part that is the furthest away from my hand first. So I wouldn't have to put my hand in wet paint. So here we go. 
I'm not sure if all of my saving drawings will be this line style. But it's kind of fun to do. But it's a lot of pages. That is another two, four, six, seven more pages to do. I'm not sure I can come up with ideas for all of them as quickly as I want to. So, but what I might do is just paint them all black so they're ready to go. I already painted most of them black. And then I can kind of go in and uh, use the normal pages and do something there and then go back and do a black one ever so often. Um, the book is much more appealing to use than it used to be already. So. And the Posca pen totally played nice. It gave a the good steady line. It's it's actually they are actually really good Posca pens. I just wish they would make them so you could refill them. You can refill them, but you just can't buy any of the ink, which is a shame. Maybe sometime they they learn. This is actually a motif I've used quite a lot. When I was younger, I did some uh, silhouette paper clippings. Is that the name? I would fold paper in in half and then clip out a motif of of cranes kind of pointing their beaks together in the middle in silhouette and then plants around them. So it didn't take me too much study to to kind of confirm that what I did back then wasn't all that wrong. So there's the feathers. And now I pretty much outlined what I trace onto the paper. I'm missing the eye and uh, and the uh, marking on the head. But I hadn't haven't done any more than that because that was all I thought I needed. Now I'm making ripples in the water because that foot disappears into water. And the second ring of ripples I just mark up with dots to make it a little softer. You can't tell it really on the camera, I guess, but it's just an idea. Sketchbooks are for ideas that you test out and execute and then you see if you like it or not. If you don't like it, you don't show it to anybody and you don't do more about it. If you like it, you might put it in a sketchbook, flip through, or you might go say, okay, this was an interesting project. I'm going to turn it into maybe a painting or a drawing or whatever you, your thing is. So now I'm going to start to fill in some more feathers on the wings. I didn't have to to draw them in on the on the first transfer because those I can haha <laughs> wing. Uh, I felt confident enough that I could draw them in afterwards. So just one little curve at the time. Well, I turn things around so it f the curve fit my hand. Yeah, and that tail needed a little bit more. So let's give it some feathers. And then some longer pointed feathers on the body. Not really drawing them, just drawing in some lines to symbolize that we got feathers going in this direction. And also to make the body a little lighter, to make just a little bit of color difference from one thing to another. I'll take a photo of this and put it on Instagram after I posted the video. That's where I actually I post most of my drawings there too. So please uh, 
My, the link is or in the, or yeah, my handle is in the description of this video. So, and some markings of the scales of the legs. Because those legs are so thin, it is basically just little dots of air. So, paint I put on there. To do a little more up there with the beak. Marked up the eye area and add some more feathers to that wing. I'm getting less and less specific as I go to the next row of feathers. Last ones are just pretty much dots. I'm gonna turn this around. Come on, Ed. come on. You can't make curves like that. I guess they're small enough. Nope, it got annoying. There we go. <laughs> Same thing here. It's an interesting way of drawing because you kind of reduce things to to just indications of what you are drawing. Yeah, and then I've kind of have to do something because I didn't center this piece right. And I can't really make a border around it because the wings are in the way. So instead I just kind of continue some of the drawing ideas I had on my sketch that I didn't transfer. I don't have to because they're not that difficult to draw. I'm just again symbolizing some leaves that bend there at the top and they stand in water so we made a little bit of rings there. And here we go, here's a stem, a seed top and on the top of that. Uh, I'm not sure, do you call them foxtails in English? It's a reed thing that has a brown top, very common in all of Scandinavia at least. Uh, I'm quite sure they're in England too. And I think I might have seen them in Canada, but I'm not entirely sure. But have a very... Mm, dramatic and very recognizable look to them with that seed head there. So put in three of those there to fill in that empty space and to put some background to where we're at, what type of environment. There goes another one. Yeah, it still needs something. Yeah, some water ripples. Yeah, so let's put in some grass. And here's the proof I can't draw a straight line. It goes up, 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 it goes. Hinted some reflections underneath. And we're just putting some grass seed heads on there. There's just this, a, line, a curved line with some dots uh, at the top. There we go. And then what do we do up there? Right in front of the head of the bird. It's big black space. Oh yeah, let's put 
a white circle. And you guys can decide if you think it's the moon or the sun. It's the same to me. It's one of them. And here, how do you fill in a white circle with a tiny thin pen? You do spirals. Or you get tired of doing it from outside in, you do it from inside out. And then you fill in the, the worst black spots afterwards. So, we're about the end. Um, thank you all for watching. As usual, I'll be back with something more. That's the finished drawing. There you go. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Bye bye.